Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about what could have been in Cassette Beast and by that I'm talking about scrapped monster designs that had recently made their way into the art book present within the deluxe version of the game. I personally love this art book and while I do wish I could purchase a physical version, it has been very helpful for thumbnail art and stuff like that. But one particular section showcases a plethora of designs that were never actually brought into the full version of the game. These range from what I guess you could consider beta designs of previous monsters to straight up creatures that we've never seen anything like. Jay, one of the lead developers behind the game, was kind enough to expand on some of these designs and give some sort of feedback as to perhaps why they didn't make it into the game and what their origins are. That being said, I'm going to be showcasing all of that and more after the intro, so make sure you sit back, relax, and let's dive in. All right, so you're gonna notice that as we go through this, some monsters are grouped together whilst others are expanded upon individually. And that's because some of them will share certain themes whilst others will just have their own unique reasons for existing. I've basically got seven separate statements from Jay regarding each specific category of monsters, which we're gonna go through here. And I'm sort of gonna give my thoughts and insight as we go as well. So this first section Jay describes as unused designs. And he says, just some sketches that we didn't feel quite fit the quality of the rest of the monsters, or maybe didn't see where they'd fit in the grand scheme of the game. Now, right off the bat, I really like the green guy. He kind of reminds me of like an alien from Gantz. And the robot guy is pretty cool too. I do kind of see what they mean though. They don't really fit thematically with the rest of the cassettes perhaps, but I think these are really cool designs. Next, we have this creature, which is a proposed evolution for Candyville before they settled on having it branched out to metal slash poison lines. This makes sense. I'm guessing this was something that happened before they decided to do branched evolution as a whole. Next, we have a bunch of monster designs, all of which are are actually explorations for the starter, as Jay states. He says, we've said a bunch, but the starters were the hardest to design. I experimented with a lot of ideas along the themes of demons and ghosts before settling on Candyville and Banshee. You'll notice some of the ideas here made it into other monsters. The bell-handed monster features the same wings, albeit a different color as Banshee, and the steel golem's body here was used instead of a smog magog in the final roster. The devil in a hood is also a proto Candyville, and you can see its shape is very similar to the final monster. Next, we have this guy who might look familiar. Jay says that this is an unused monster that eventually became Cloxy. You can see it's much more themed around an arcade claw machine. It might have gone in the mall. And I think that's really cool. That would be something that if they ever decided to do like an expansion to the roster or at least like, you know, add new forms or something in the future, that would be something I definitely think would be a cool thing to kind of have in the mall. This next one is probably one of my favorite monsters like in monster taming. And and it's an unused starter grade remaster based on Evangelion. He said he felt it lacked identity, so didn't use it. But honestly, like, I think this would be dope if it was actually the third stage of that line. This thing is just too cool not to use. Number six, we have alternate forms for the Catelli family. The first one is a scrapped middle form between Catelli and Cat 5, as we decided not to have a middle stage for partner characters, as that would take up too many slots in our roster. We were committed not to going over 120, and an alternate Cat 5 that has different tails. Pretty self explanatory. And then and the next one is an alternate gear you design. I updated this to be much more gear themed for the final monster design. And if this wasn't going to be like a middle stage or anything like that, I definitely think that the final version acts as a final stage better because this one, I know it's probably not supposed to be scaled small, but this one just looks like a small monster in my opinion. It looks like it would be like a middle stage between Velosa Rifle and Gear You, even though it's a three stage line basically with Bulletino being the first. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. I've got to say that the starter grade evolution that was scrapped would be amazing as a third stage for that line. Like I said, I think it's one of my favorites here. So who knows, maybe we can get some sort of DLC in the future and peer pressure the devs. But honestly, there are a lot of really cool monsters here. And I think a really cool way that they could sort of integrate some of these beta designs and get away with it would be to have some sort of DLC where monsters from a new world that developed differently could start falling into this version of new world or something like that. So some story spoilers ahead and you can click off now if you don't want to hear any minor spoilers but it seems like the world of Cassette Beast and the entire universe that the developers have created factor in every human idea that's ever existed as sort of a parallel universe. In this way, that means that any game that's existed, any idea you've had, any movie, story, etc., 
is canon to the Cassette Beast universe in one way or another and exists within its own specific realm. This sort of multiverse that exists based off the human psyche is something that could seriously incorporate so many possibilities such as monster taming crossovers with other games, justifications for maybe why some of these beta monsters that did receive new forms would exist as future updates or something like that, etc. This also means that any future project that Byton Studios makes, regardless of whether or not it's monster taming, could in fact exist in the same universe as Cassette Beast, and if interdimensional rifts or some sort of craziness like that exists, we could see references from there. But all that being said, I do want to put out sort of a DLC speculation video in the future. I know the game just came out a few weeks ago, but I really do think that if any game's going to have a DLC in monster taming, it should be this one. And I think that if you've played through Cassette Beast, you'll really understand my perspective and the impact that it can have. But yeah, all that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Just want to say again, special thanks to Jay for elaborating on all of this stuff. And make sure you check out the Cassette Beast Steam page linked below and grab it on Nintendo Switch when it releases. You can also subscribe to this channel for daily monster taming videos and check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon link below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Drogh Ghost, Dark Persona, Exodus, and Candy Moronzi, and we'll see you next time. Peace.